All right, welcome to the third video, uh, which will be mounting. Uh, if you bought your C um, CPU container with uh, with a hole or without a hole, you still need to add the probe. Um, you need to add the probe as close as possible to the heat source or where your CPU will be, so you have the most accurate readings of your temperatures. Basically, you just need to stick the probe on there with electrical tape or with whatever you want. Just make sure to get it nice and close so you can actually read your temperatures and overclock properly. Once you have your probe mounted like this, you can now read your temperatures nicely and hopefully effectively. Um, right now I'm just preparing the bottom side of the board for mounting. I just I just put a piece of uh, paper towel down here just so I can have a, a nice and sealed or at least something that can catch some water or ice forming at the bottom. A lot of uh, containers come with mounting back plates which is pretty useful because you don't want your board to bend if you tighten your screws too hard but in my case I don't tighten the pot or the container too hard so my board should be fine this is just for to catch some uh, ice or water forming but normally at the bottom side of the board is pretty safe because everything is really cold although uh, I would advise insulating these chips at the top here because they uh, help with the feed voltage feed to your CPU and if they get water on you're in trouble uh, for my setup I have uh, a piece of armor flex at the bottom which I place my board on top of which creates a pretty airtight situation so I don't have any problems with the bottom side of my board getting water or um, cold Next I'm going to put up the just a piece of armor flex to create some more insulation. You can cut it the way you want. This isn't specifically specifically cut for this board, so it's not sitting 100 percent correct, but you should cut your own. Also make sure the hole is big enough for your container, don't go too tight because you might have problems mounting which I will show you now. Next up I'm going to put, it's time now to put on some thermal paste. Uh, this is just some Cooler Master Thermo Fusion cheap stuff but I can buy a lot of it and use a lot of it and I'm just going to put a huge blob in the middle. I'll spread it out now when I mount the pot. I'm not too concerned, I haven't found any inconsistency with maximum overclocks with the amount of paste I use. <clears throat> okay, next up we're going to mount the pot or the container, but now this is very important because you don't want to mount it badly. You really want a good mount for this. So you're going to put <coughs> it over, make sure it aligns, and then when you press it down, make sure it press nice and firmly, and just move it a bit. And if you're unsure whether your mount is good or not, you can try and lift the pot a little and it will stick, it will suck. That means it, it's making good contact. And now it's time to screw. Just keep even pressure on the, on the mount so that you make sure that you have a nice spread out mount, which is essential. Mounting is something you should take extra precaution in doing because you don't want to stop your overclocking session halfway noticing you had a bad mount. Make sure you mount it correctly. Tighten the screws, not too much. Just feel it out, feel whether the motherboard is taking too much strain or not. Now that we have CPU nice uh, firmly mounted, it's not going anywhere, we can put on the top piece of insulation just because 
normally it, it, it gets in the way of my when I uh, screw it on. Now, now that this is ready, we can insert the memory. As you can see, I already have Vaseline in the slots. Just make sure that nothing falls in between because that's Vaseline grabs anything that it can. So, a piece of toilet paper or thermal paste, anything that could get into the way. Okay, now we're going to take some paper towel and just get this thing ready to run. Just put paper towel everywhere you think is necessary. In between, uh, in between the memory slots, especially because with Ivy Bridge it gets really cold, and especially your memory it gets really cold, and then creates water vapor and drops onto your wood, which is pretty dangerous and uncool. Just get it in between and just push it in there. Just be careful when you use sharp objects like this, not to damage components. If you feel safer, use something wooden or plastic. I'm not too concerned, I've done this a few times. And yeah, just wherever you feel it's necessary, put paper towels. Catch up any water that forms that you don't necessarily want on your board. And use your own initiative, wherever you feel the needs put, and never feel that over insulation is a problem. You can never insulate too much. It all depends on how long you want to run. I know how long I run. I normally don't run longer than two hours or so, just because, well, sometimes longer, but... Okay, I just finished and I will catch you in the next lesson on actually how to overclock this board and what to do uh, when you go cold. Thank you.